Good evening. Welcome to our webinar where we're going to give you the chance to meet the Hoot candidates Tova Evan Fain, Albert Levy, and Rafal Mittis. My name is Arya Sonnenberg, uh, representing the Zahut Anglos. Together with me in the uh, off-site Wuhan is Jeff Cohen, our United States Director of Zahut International. And chairing, uh, chairing, doing the emceeing tonight will be Shmuel Saki. You'll hear from him in just a moment. Before we get started, I want to give you some late updates. I was in the uh, Tel Aviv headquarters today watching the um, election website and seeing the process of how it's going to be going on, I want to give you guys a first a first look, not a look, I don't have pictures here, I want to give you a first idea of what to expect. The more times you hear it, the easier it will be. If we get very lucky and have a lot of Seat Adishmaya, those of you who are English speakers will be directed to an, a site that is completely in English. That's the plan. Let's see if we get there. What's going to happen is as follows. On Sunday already, you should be getting an email and an SMS. You can use either one of them to click a link to go to the voting website. You can't vote yet, but you'll be able to see how it works. You'll be able to log in. You'll be able to look at the candidates, to read about the candidates. You'll even be able to, to assign points to the candidates. I'll explain that in a moment. You just won't be able to submit any kind of vote. This is a way to get your feet wet with the system. After uh, after you do that, you'll log out. You'll be able to make your choices on Tuesday. Th that's just so that you can understand how the system works. That's why we made sure that we had your contact information because you'll be getting a message. You have to click on that message in order to get there. And you have six points that you can allocate to the candidates. And you can do so any way you would like to. You can allocate six points to one candidate. You can allocate one point to six different candidates or anything in between. But you must allocate all six points. The system will not allow you to submit your vote until you've allocated all six points. Tuesday morning, when the actual voting takes place, you will get another SMS and email. Uh, it will come to you probably about maybe about 8 o'clock in the morning when the polls, the internet polls start. At that point, you'll go through the same process. You'll get to the login page. You need to enter your ID number, your 2.zahoot. That is your key to get into the system. You will then make your selections. You'll choose two points for Albert and two points for Tova and two points for Rafal or any way that you want to do it. You'll click the Submit button. And then, before your vote is actually submitted, you will get another verification code back to your email and to your SMS. It's a four-digit code. That code needs to be entered back into the Ma'arechet, into the voting system, and then you click a final submit. At that point, you will then have voted. You will be recorded as having voted. You will not be able to get back into the system. Nobody will know what you have voted, of course, but that is going to be the end of your vote. So this is being done because, of course, it's a voting. We have to be very careful that everything is, is very yeshar, very straight, uh, very secure. Therefore, we're using this double authentication system. That's how the voting is going to take place. God willing, it'll be in English. It will be exciting. It'll be fun. For those of you who have been a little bit concerned that you're getting a lot of messages from candidates and other stuff, I have a tip for you. Vote first thing in the morning. Once you do so, and our system knows that you have voted, you won't get any more messages during the day saying, vote, 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 because all of the candidates and all the systems are going to know that you voted already. You'll be done. So the quieter, the quieter you want your day to be, the earlier in the morning you should vote. God willing, it'll work this way. I'm handing you over. Oh, actually, before I hand you over, I, I, we're going to ask you to, to uh, be able to ask questions of the candidates tonight. And in order to do so, on your what go to webinar panel, there's a little questions uh, pod. I'd like you to open that pod and type in there where you are calling from, where you are attending from this evening, so we can know that you're here, here with us and that you can ask us questions. Miriam from Kiryat Arba. Who else is with us tonight? I know Lisa's here. She was chatting with us a little bit earlier. 
Chuck from Harnof. It's important that you be able to find the questions pod. Um, actually, I don't really see what you're seeing. So, Lisa, maybe you could write in for me a little description of what people should be looking for because we're only getting a, a few responses here. Anybody else uh, able to find their questions, Pod? Okay. What we're going to do now, I think, actually, let's let's get started. Uh, Moshe Bird is here. Moshe from uh, Ramat Beit Shemesh. Fantastic. I think what we'll do right now, let's actually get started. Uh, while we're talking, if you folks could take a look and find your question, Pod, I see uh, if it says uh, Lisa writes to us that uh, on the top right corner. There may be a red arrow. That's from Chuck. It open open it up, and under the questions, there's a blank space. Um, if the meeting thing has closed, reopen it by clicking on that arrow. Okay, so you guys can take a look for that in the meantime. And I'd like to turn the tables over now to our MC. This would be Mr. Shmuel Sackett. Thank you, Arya. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you, candidates Albert, Tova, and Rafael. And we're going to jump right into it. What I would like you to do is, uh, in about two minutes, if you could please simply introduce yourselves to us and tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, we'll be very gentlemanly like, and we'll start ladies first. So, oh, no. Tova Evan Chen, <laughs> Vakasha, please tell us who you are and um, a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Tova. Well, my Hebrew is better than my English. I was brought up in, um, I was born in Argentina, and I came here uh, as a six-year-old girl, and um, um, I've been, um, well, my, my main um, uh, degree is uh, I'm a rabbinic pleader, a rabbinical attorney, and um, I um, entered um, the political um, env environment um, already in 1999, but um, studying a, a very, very special course of um, political issues for women, um, and um, but I couldn't find an ideological uh, party. That was my main problem. So um, here, I, here I am in the hoot. I think the hoot is perfect uh, for me and uh, for all, all Jews, all the citizens of Israel. And I guess when we warm up, I'm going to be more specific. Okay? Thank you very I much. I see myself one, one more thing. Uh, after uh, representing um, for many years in in the rabbinic courts in Israel, and uh, maybe I'll tell afterwards about a big project that I did, I call myself a feminist. Ask me why. That's afterwards. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll go to uh, Albert Levy. Albert, uh, please tell us a little bit about who you are and. Uh, you know, get us excited about voting for you. Okay. Thank you very much, more than to all the organizers. That's fantastic. You are doing a fantastic job. And I am, um, as probably you, you already guessed, mm -hmm. I uh, came from France uh, to Israel. Uh, 23 years ago, I came here on Aliyah uh, at age 14. Somebody, somebody, one second, Albert. Somebody's getting some, we're getting some feedback from someone's microphone. Or from their speaker, it actually might be from yours. It might be from yours, Albert. We'll just lower your speaker a little bit. Lower your the volume of your speaker. Okay. Because we're getting some feedback, a little bit, and that should be good. Is it okay now? Now it's okay. Yes. Let's talk. Okay. Good. So, I, in fact, I born in Morocco, and I uh, my parents left Morocco to, for France when I was a teenager. So I spent 17 years in Morocco, another 25 years in France. I made most of my studies there. I studied um, economics 
I have an MA in economics and also an MBA. And I also studied political sciences in, in France and in Israel after my, my Aliyah. And I made the major part of my professional career in Israel, at least the start of it. And I'm basically a businessman. Um, I created companies in several fields, in the import-export business, in computers, real estate, investments management. And I did it in several countries like Hong Kong, Taiwan, France, USA, Israel. And uh, in fact, I can compare uh, the difficulty uh, uh, or the facility to open and to manage a business in those different countries. Um, I wanted to say at the beginning, and I will come back to that because that's important too. Uh, I am married. I have four beautiful kids. Uh, two of them are already married. I am also a grandfather of two. And uh, well, I speak uh, French, English, Hebrew. I'm not too bad at Spanish either. And I probably have some, a few words in Arabic somewhere in my head. Uh, I joined Zlikud. Uh, I left the Likud uh, a few months after uh, Moshe Feilin himself left the Likud because I was very disappointed by the fact that this party does not apply, uh, does not uh, uh, apply a, a political ideology uh, on, on the, as I was expecting, just like Moshe. So I accepted the invitation of Moshe to join Zehut, and I now I, I feel really happy as a political activist inside Zehut. Thank you, Albert. We're going to now go to Rafael Menes, who will yes. tell us again, please, uh, who are you? And, uh, you know, get us, let, let us know who Rafael Menes is as the candidate and as a person. I'll do my best. Uh, okay, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Rafael, I'm uh, 39 years old. I was born and raised in uh, Ashkelon in Israel. Uh, I'm uh, married to Odelia. Uh, she's a, she has a PhD in law and she's a law professor in Kriyat uh, Ono. Uh, and I myself, I have a PhD in physics and I'm a professor at Ariel University. Uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was studying uh, in my bachelor's uh, biophysics, then I did uh, uh, physics for the PhD in a direct course. Uh, and then I did uh, my postdoctoral studies in the uh, University of Pennsylvania, the medical school there. I'm combining physics and uh, medicine. Uh, I was always interested in uh, politics. Uh, and as a teenager, I'm, a, I'm defining myself as a liberal since I was in the ninth grade. Uh, and it was very important for me to uh, bring the liberal views to the Israeli uh, public. You know, in Israel, liberal, classic, when, when I'm saying liberals, I mean classical liberals, not, not the liberals in uh, the U.S. Uh, so in Israel, you don't really hear that. You don't learn that it's in school. Uh, and uh, when they tell you that the government, the state, shouldn't interfere in your life, in Israel it sounds very uh, awkward. It's not something that you hear every day. Um, but I think this is the right way to gain back our freedom and to uh, make Israel great again. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, I, this is the main reason why we started with Zehud. I was a member of Manigut Yudit before we we founded the uh, uh, Zehud, and I was one of the founders of Zehud. Uh, and I think there is a very special combination of a uh, right wing and classical liberals in the same party, which is something that in Israel doesn't seem natural, even though it, it is natural, but in Israel, the civil rights, the human rights, the, the, the left always took, took, uh, took them for, the, for himself. But uh, finally, we have the youth that will bring them back to the right wing party. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And I just want to point out to all the people listening tonight that what you're seeing right here is 
kibbutz galiot at its best, the ingathering of the exiles, because here are three candidates, and we have an Israeli born, <laughs> we have a Moroccan born, we have Argentinian born, and I'm emceeing tonight and born in good old New York. So <laughs> you have Jews coming from all over, uh, coming here, and we're here for one reason, because we're Jews. And that's what Zahud is all about. So we're going to try to have the, the best list for the Knesset possible, and you see already what candidates we have. So the number one question that I have for all of you is, is this. A, <coughs> excuse me. A poll <coughs> was just taken uh, in, in Zihut, uh, uh, and it shows by uh, uh, Professor Camille Fuchs, who's a top, top polling company, that showed that at the present time, right now, if elections were held today, we would get 2.4 seats. However, when asked afterwards, the people, if you knew for a fact that the Zahut party led by Moshe Friedman would pass the minimum threshold, and that, by the way, for people that don't know, is four seats, then who would you vote for? And we went up from 2.4 to 6.3, over six seats. So people like us, they want us, they're interested in us, they just don't want to waste their vote. It happened in the last election with Eli Ishai, over 100,000 votes were wasted, it has happened in the past, and people don't want to do that. So the first hurdle we need to overcome, the first mountain we need to climb, is to get this behind us, that we're not talking anymore about yes or no, but we're definitely passing the minimum threshold. And we are right now, as we speak, about 40,000 votes short of that. Here's the question. How do you, Tova, Albert, Rafael, how do you bring to us at least 10 to 15,000 votes? Because we are 40,000 short. We need your help. Please tell us and convince me how you can bring 10 to 15,000 votes. We'll start with Albert. Okay. Uh, do you hear me now correctly? Yes, now much better. Perfect quality. Okay, okay that's perfect. Okay, so I want to tell you that uh, I, I know the survey you're talking about, and I am absolutely optimistic that we are going to pass much above the threshold for several reasons. First of all, we have time from now to the elections because this is only the first step. We are going to have another step in our primaries, that is that the 15 candidates who will pass uh, this first step, we, each one of them we shall, we shall make his own campaign in addition to the campaign of the party. And this is going to make a lot of noise in the communication, in the media in Israel, because there was nothing like that in the history. We shall be the first party in history to, manage, to have open primaries. That's one, one reason. The second reason is that uh, I feel around me a lot of tiredness of the actual government. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and the Likud have been in power very long. So I feel a lot of tiredness. And this tiredness is especially strong among the right-wing voters because it is, a, it is very clear for anyone that the Likud and Benjamin Netanyahu are not applying a right-wing policy, not on the political side, and not on the economical side. It's not liberal at all. And uh, so I am extremely optimistic. We are going to pass the threshold. For me, it's absolutely sure. And the last thing I would like to say, as I told you before, I learned uh, political science. And I've been watching the politics scene uh, all over the world. And the last three years, I have never seen such a thing like that. There were crazy surprises everywhere. In the States, as you very well know, in France, as I very well know, and in many other countries. So I do believe that Zehut will be the surprise of the next elections. Albert, I'm, I might add that even here in Israel, nobody predicted that Gabay would win the Labour pri uh, Party elections, but he did. Came from the outside, completely new in the Labour Party, and today he's the head of the Labour Party. So we agree, changes are coming in Yashir Koach. Raphael... Sorry. Excuse me. Yes, we'll, we'll get back to you soon. 
Rafael, yeah, how do you bring votes to the table, to Zuhud? Okay, so I think that in our kind of a party, no one person will bring 40,000 uh, votes or something like that, maybe besides Peglin. Uh, uh, but when we'll have a, a group of people, we'll have a, a, and we have this ideology, and we have the platform that we vote, and when the people will hear that, then I think the potential is, is much above uh, 400,000 votes, not just 40,000. Uh, and this is what, what I did in the last uh, month, uh, just convincing people. And you know, when people hear what we have to say, even though it's, it's something sounds revolutionary or is very new for many people, but when they really hear that and when they listen and you explain them, many, many people uh, are joining. I myself, I, I joined, uh, I have, I think, 140 people that joined just by convincing them. So I think there's a, a huge potential and we just need to work hard. And I think that if we'll get less than 10 seats, it will be a big disappointment for me at least, because I think the potential is much bigger. Agreed. And Tova, yeah. How, yeah. How, how, do you, how do you help bring votes uh, to Zuhud? Well, um, I'm being speaking to lots of people. And uh, even today, I was in the, at the hairdresser, and people started uh, asking, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining. I, I'm, I'm saying that uh, I'm sick and tired of sitting in a big orchestra when it's mezayef, uh, it doesn't have a, a right pitch. Okay, if 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 the music is bad, you you, you prefer uh, a, a little uh, uh, you know a camera uh, um, quartet or whatever, and not a big uh, mistake. Um, that's one. And uh, second, I really I really see as uh, as uh, Albert said, um, people don't want to vote. There are so many people that are so disappointed that they won't even go to the to the to the to the, to the they, they won't vote. So these are the people that you could you could uh, put together and and talk them into uh, coming to the hut. I'm pretty sure that we'll have. I wouldn't say um, I wouldn't say Rafa that I would be disappointed if this or that. I know that there's. I see myself as a as a as an agent of change, and um, I see that the, the most of the work that we have to do is in our mind, in, in the people's minds. As Rafael said, uh, people are not used to think liberal. People are not used to uh, to for, to to have honest uh, honest politicians, and I must say, tell you that whoever I meet, they say they know Moshe Feiglin, even though they 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 hesitate about his uh, his uh, his um, ideas. They see him as an honest person. That's so much in the Israeli politics that I'm sure it's going to win. The truth is going to win. And um, uh, so now I have, uh, I, I'm really just going to ask one more question to all of you, and then we have questions coming in from people, and we're asking even more people to type in their questions. But my final question, which is to everybody, very, very simple. Four words. Why are you running? Rafael, you're a professor in Ariel University, Albert, successful businessman, Tova, and I'm an attorney working with the court system, doing wonderful things. You're all very, very busy people. Uh, it's not for the big salary that the Knesset pays you. It's not for the, <laughs> it's, I don't know. Please, direct to the point. Rafael, why are you running? Because of my kids. I have, a, I have a seven wonderful kids and uh, I want to leave them a much better Israel than what we have now. Uh, and 
I, when I see the uh, members of the Knesset, uh, some of them, you know, when they speak, they say, they say great things. But when they're there in the Knesset, they're doing the opposite. And I think I, did, I can do better. I think that uh, my life experience and uh, uh, my ideology uh, will lead me to, to do better than what they do. And, and we'll stand after our, our world and we'll make it well great again. <laughs> Tova, why are you running? Yeah, uh, well, um, I, I'm saying um, I, I had a, a real uh, disappointment is a very little word for what I felt uh, in Oslo. Since then, I feel that Israel is crushing. And, um, and um, as I say, when Moshe Feiglin was uh, stopped all the traffic on 90, when was it, 95, I wait a minute, that was Moshe and me. Don't forget about me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I heard about your steak. I heard about your steak afterwards. Okay, um, okay. I, I, I used to sit under the house of uh, the apartment of uh, Arya Deri to ask him to leave the Oslo, Oslo uh, government. And um, during the years, as I said, I, I, I wanted a real change. And um, I feel that um, meeting the the governmental um, um, system and the local system uh, is so poor, and so um, uh, they steal so much money that you don't have to be even liber liberal in order to want to keep it back, to give it back to the citizens. So uh, I found it so bad. Uh, in all terms, in in the in the in the um, um, religious um, um, system, in the government system, in the local system, that something has to be done in order to to. Uh, if you knew the comics of uh, Hagashashim, they say we you, you have to close the Mediterranean and change the water. Okay, lisgor et ayam ve'lachlif et amayim. That's what Zehut wants to do, not revolutionary, but, but you know, in, 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 in a moderate uh, way, but the system has to be changed. And as I, I've done uh, a few things, and I, I, I think uh, it's hard to buy me off, uh, I think I'll do well. <laughs> Wonderful. Albert, you're running businesses on four continents. You're a busy guy. Why do you want to give that up and be a member of Knesset? Well, uh, in fact, life gave me anything, uh, anything I asked, so I have to do something else for my country now. Uh, before that, I would like just to say a word. I forgot to completely reply to your question before. What can I do to have more votes? Uh, I think I can bring all the French speakers public to Zehut, a big part of it. I think I can bring the uh, traditional uh, Jews living in Israel and a, a part of the Jews living in the center of the country. I live in, in Erslia myself, not in Judea Samaria, but I feel full solidarity with the people living in Judea and Samaria. Uh, now you asked four points why I am a candidate. First point, Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. Uh, it, it's time that our policy goes with the truth, simply the truth. There is a very strong link between the Jewish people and the land of Israel, and there is absolutely no uh, Palestinian national identity. It never occurred in the past. It never ha had such a thing. So we have to go back to the truth, to the basic. That's point one. Point two, we have too much bureaucracy in this country. Really too much, way too much. It is proved by many, many uh, institutes of economics. So we have to make a lot of reforms to have a fluid, free economy, liberal economy, we have to do that. We are, we are right to do it. The third reason is that we have a, a political system which is wrong in many aspects. Uh, we have, um, for example, a list of, uh, uh, of, of um, uh, deputies who are not fair to our other country. As you have seen recently and also in the, in the far past, we have seen some uh, cooperation 
between some member of the, the Knesset and terrorists. This cannot be accepted and things has to be changed while absolutely protecting our democracy. That's an extremely strong point. And the last point, the electoral system is not good in Israel because we don't have constituency. So we have uh, uh, 15 uh, political parties. That's way too much for such a small country. And we have every one year and a half to two years elections. We have not a stable government. That's not good. And also the loyalty of the, uh, of the member of the Knesset is not toward the electors. It's toward their party. That's not good too. So there are a few things to change. I want to be an actor of this change. I have nothing to prove any longer in the business world. I want to help my country now. Yes, yeah, We have 26 minutes left to this webinar. Jeff, I'm going to turn it over to you to ask the questions that people have been sending in. All right. I have a question coming in from Moshe Bert. I'm actually going to open up his Hi. microphone so he can ask it himself. Go ahead, okay. Moshe. Okay. Th thank you. Thank you. And it, this is uh, really, um, we're, we're seeing advances in the computer age, and uh, this is really super. Um, my question is for all three candidates and for maybe Shmuel as well. Um, I, was, uh, I get the uh, Jewish press uh, online every day, and uh, I happen to see this, uh, this piece about uh, uh, Haver Knesset uh, Smoltrich, um, who is uh, advocating uh, paying the um, quote-unquote Palestinians to emigrate. Okay, and uh, this is part of uh, uh, Zahut's platform, okay? Um, and so I'm wondering, uh, what are the chances of Zahut uh, uh, joining forces, or, or uh, what are the chances of Mo Smoltrich and his faction uh, joining forces or, or coalescing with Zahut? Um, uh, thank you, Moshe. Uh, Rafael, you want to start with that? I want to say, yes. Uh, so, uh, Smutwich is, is a nice guy. Uh, and he, like I said, he has a great uh, views, but he's still in the uh, Abaita UD. And he sat there even when they uh, released the terrorists, and he sat there even when they did the freezing in Yudha Shomron, and he sat there even when they uh, ruined the Migron and Damona. Yeah, it, it was very irritating for me to see him going to cry with the people of Amona while his party is the one that's ruining the, the houses. So uh, it's not enough. It's not enough to say the right things. You need also to do the right things. Uh, so we won't be able to join, uh, to go together with the Abaita UD. They are not, their red lines, they, they already passed all the red lines and they're doing a left policy. So uh, we're not on the same track. Uh, but if Smutwich wants to join us, he will be welcomed, but he will have to agree with all our platform. Uh, and I think he, his views are not really liberal. Yes, he, he did some work together with Shmoli, Haver Knesset Shmoli, which is socialist. So yeah. we need to make sure that he will agree with the liberal views of the of the Ud before we we'll take him in. May I, uh, may I um, answer? You go ahead, Tova. Yeah, um, I think that the best th part of this uh, Smutrich thing is um, that Moshe Feiglin's ideas are penetrating all over. If we could uh, look the opposite way, look at Oslo. When they, they started to speak about Oslo, uh, God forbid, and uh, and uh, that uh, that maybe um, we will shake hands with uh, with a terrorist. It was out of lines. It was not acceptable altogether. 
I think when we started to uh, to speak about um, um, getting the whole country uh, um, under our jurisdiction, um, people thought it was crazy. And now we're speaking um, um, the same language. That's a lot. I, sh I think we should embrace ideas like Smutrich, but Smutrich is used by by Bennett to be, you know, the righteous uh, speaker. But the deeds, as Raphael says, uh, are still half lefties. So it's not in, not good enough. I'm sure he's going to be a good partner, you know, if we we'll, if, if we want to to do some some inter deals. Uh, with him when we're in the Knesset, but not not anything else. Okay. Uh, well, on my side, I would like to underline that the uh, the ideology and the behavior of the Beit Yehudi is is clearly different from ours. Beit Yehudi want to annex only a few parts, a tiny parts of uh, Judah and Samaria, while our our program. Uh, is to annex all Judea and Samaria because it's simply based on the truth. Again, uh, it's the land of the Israeli people and it is not the land of any other uh, national identity. Uh, it, and it is not a long-term solution uh, to, to annex only a few parts of the Judea and Samaria. The other part, which is very fundamental in my eyes, is that the Baita Yudi was ready a few months ago to uproot Jews from their home in Judea Samaria. Our leader, Moshe Fagin, says that he won't stay one minute in a coalition who, who would uh, uh, uproot uh, Jews from their home anywhere from the land in Israel. Uh, I fully agree with this approach. I, I, felt, I felt ashamed as a Jew and as an Israeli the day that we uprooted Jews from their home in Gush Katif and also in Amona. So this is a very fundamental difference between Beit Yehudi and ours. Of course, any member of Beit Yehudi, including Mr. Samoyish or anyone else who wants to join, who wants to join our ranks, is welcome based on our program. That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Moshe uh, Bert, since you asked that question, you also uh, mentioned me. I will tell you one thing. In agreement with what our candidate said, let, it, let us be very clear that we are open to everybody and unity is a very, very important thing. We'll gladly talk to, to Smotrich and anybody else who's interested in working together with us. We're not a one-man show. We're looking to really work with a lot of different people. And they say that imitation is the best form of flattery. So a few people sent me that article today from both the Jewish press and Arutz Sheva and said, could you believe what he's doing? How dare he? And I said, just the opposite. Look, they're running with ideas. They're running with our, with our ideas on the uh, on this Arab immigration. They're running with our ideas on the, uh, many of them are already talking about school vouchers. They're talking about legalizing cannabis. All this started from Moshe, from Zahud, and from this party. So it's wonderful that they're talking about it, and we're happy. And again, we're open to talking to all to all these people. Um, I see a question that just came in, and I, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, and that is, uh, again, specifically to each of the candidates, what is your expertise? In other words, what issues will you specifically focus on? Albert, you mentioned a few, but we see that, you know, one of, not to compare, but just to, to learn from politics, one of Trump's problems is he came in talking about so many different things that he's, he, he's, it's not, he's not able to get anything done. Le tovo, le ra, good or bad, I'm not saying it. Just, it's just so, he's just all over the map. And here the question is, we have three different people from three different places of the world that all came together. What's the one issue, if I could ask you, the one issue that you will focus on more than anything else as a Chaver Knesset? We'll start with you, Tova. Okay. Uh, so as I come from, um, it's, it's two things. First of all, what's my, what are my expertise? So, of course, I'm, um, I'm more familiar with um, all the, all, 
what, what has to do with uh, religion and uh, and state. And uh, I was working um, with the Ministry of Justice and the rabbinic uh, court uh, system in order to 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 try to um, eliminate disputes um, between uh, between couples in um, in several um, rabbinic courts. And while I was doing that for six years, and this was a model that uh, I did, it's, it wasn't there yet between uh, 1999 and 2005, but um, the liberal approach of uh, bringing in a service uh, which was uh, chosen by by free um, market, right, um, of mediators, arbitration, uh, and uh, arbitrators, and uh, and um, who were trained in in in, in uh, into the system uh, was a uh, was a very 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 good experience. And um, but I found out that when you want to to imply um, uh, any new thing, uh, in order for the the system to open their minds, uh, you find find the governmental uh, uh, bureaucracy and um, and um, uh, everything freezes. Uh, there are um, the women's uh, organizations and the and um, and the um, the the law uh, the lishkat uh, ochadin how do you say that that the bureau of attorneys the legal yeah the bureau of, of, of attorneys and uh, and and the the religious uh, uh, system uh, who wants just to keep uh, their um, um, uh, their power it's not about the citizens it's it's about power so. And in the same way, I feel uh, in municipal uh, uh, issues that when you want to make any kind of change, there's so much corruption that there's no no way you go in and 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 keep in keep yourself in one piece. So there has to be a way to to uh, change the system. And the system can be changed only if we release these uh, these sharim, um, this 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 mess. Um, Thank you. Uh, Albert, what's your what's your one what's your one uh, issue? The main main issue that you would focus on, main one. Okay, uh, as I told you, that before, there are four four points that I am um, really interested to to move up. My expertise, of course, is business and economy. But in spite of that, the first subject that I would like to, uh, to work on it is the change of the political system, because there is a total mess between the court of justice and, uh, and the legislative power and the executive power. If the court of justice is going to make laws instead of the government, instead of the Knesset, that's the situation which we are now. And if, in addition, if on top of that we have a bad electoral system, we are not going to be able to change anything, not the economy, not the bureaucracy, or not any other subject. We have to start from the beginning. And the beginning is to have a government who can act efficiently. So that will be the first subject I will, I will uh, work on it. That's good. And, and Rafi, what's your main number one issue? Yeah, so I fully agree with Albert that the first thing that we should do is the reform in the legal system. Uh, even though it's not the thing that I would like to change uh, uh, the most, but this is the most important one in order to be able to change, to do, to realize all our platform. Uh, of course, the uh, security issues are very close to me. Uh, I, I'm an officer in the army and, uh, and I work in the ISA and I know the but uh, the, the security uh, work from a both tactical and a strategic uh, uh, views. And I think there is a lot to change in the army, especially in the army, in the IDF. And, and, and also uh, we have to gain back our sovereignty over uh, all the parts of Israel. 
and this is the first thing that we should do right after we do the reform in the legal system. Thank you very much. Jeff, back to you. All right, we have a question from Chaim Sibinstock. Chaim, go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to say thank you to all the candidates, first of all, for taking the time, and uh, the moderators as well. Thank you very much. Um, my question is, we've seen before many um, parties have ideals before entering the Knesset, and then once they're in the Knesset, they have to sacrifice maybe some of their ideals um, in order to make these political deals happen. So why is Zahut going to be different, and what are we going to do to ensure our values and our ideals stay the same throughout our time in the Knesset? All right, thank you, Chaim. Um, if anyone wants to start that, I'll give it to you. Yeah, if you want. Go ahead, Albert. Yeah. Okay. Well, in fact, uh, there are some things on which we shall have to compromise, and some things on which we won't be able and we shall never compromise. First of all, it has to be made clear that our leader, Moshe Feiglin, is recognized all over in Israel as, a, as someone honest, as a honest politician, someone who really his words go with his action always all along his career. And he inspired all the Zehud members. That's one thing. So on which subject could we uh, compromise? On the, on the economics, we want to lower the tax on the profits of the companies. Today it's around 25%. We want to take it to 18%. If we have to compromise to 20% or 21%, temporarily, we shall agree. But we shall never agree to uproot any home from the Israel land, anywhere it is, including in all Judea and Samaria. And if it, it, it brings to a break in the coalition and during an election, we shall leave the government. Moshe Fagin said it, I approve this, and um, you can be sure that Moshe Fagin goes with his word. And most of us, all of us in Zehut, I believe, the same. Um. Go ahead, Tova. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I really think, I, as I said before, that we have to. I see myself as an agent of change, and I see that um, um, in order to to penetrate with our ideas uh, during at least th during the first currency of uh, uh, we 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 should uh, work on that. And uh, making uh, sitting in the government is not a must. I must say, um, I, I would see it uh, rather uh, us sitting even not in the coalition and doing things. A liberal party does not have to rule. That we we, we don't have to make rules. So it's much easier to to make uh, to make uh, bridges with other liberals who are in the government, but to sit and, and, and make the chinuch, make, make, uh, make more and more education of the people about all our ideas until that penetrates. And if we could do, do some work about, chinuch, about education, right? Take three experimental uh, um, 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 cities and make the, the vouchers uh, work there, and make um, uh, a few better um, um, uh, deals uh, which have to do with Rabbanut and Kashrut and marriage and divorce and, uh, and, and so on, and make some rules and bring, back, bring down the bureaucracy here and there and stop the, the, the stealing of so much uh, money, you know, uh, 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 putting, uh, making more competition for three uh, government uh, uh, companies uh, is a lot to achieve. Look at Kahlon. Kahlon only broke the cellular and he got 10 seats afterwards. So let us get the 10, 12, 12 14 seats and sit and do some things, and then we'll get to the government. When we'll get to the government, everybody is going to be sure about us. We don't have to go in and out, in and out. All right, thank you, Tova. Rafael? Clear. Yes, I think we have a big advantage that uh, uh, the members of the UT or the uh, people that are uh, running for uh, in the primary, uh, most of all of them are not uh, professional politicians. 
And you know, if you are a professional politician and you, the highest that you can get is to be in the Knesset, and and so you you will if 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 something dangerous that maybe you will uh, change your ideology or do things that you weren't didn't expect to do to keep your seat. But uh, all the candidates uh, have careers outside of the Knesset. We all have uh, our uh, uh, work and family, and uh, for us, if we won't be, we won't be in the Knesset, it won't be a tragedy. Uh, as for myself, as as a uh, as a private person, not not as the So if if I see that I'm risking my ideology, or I'm doing something that I didn't uh, want to, to do. Uh, I will uh, leave the Knesset and be uh, happy uh, back to in my work and my career. All right, thank you. Uh, we have another question that's come in from Ruth Esther Fine. I know she doesn't like to ask them on air herself. So her question is, how do you think you will withstand international pressure who, who may accuse Zahut of ethnic cleansing in trying to get the Arabs to leave the country. So let's start with uh, Tova. I'm sorry, I wasn't uh, concentrated. Can, can you go f um, take someone yeah, else? <laughs> I, I'm going to hear. No, I'm going to hear the. I didn't hear okay. the question. You want to go yeah. go back? And, That's fine. Rafael, you want to start? Not. Yes. Uh, I don't think that the world really care about that. The media in Israel, especially in Israel wants us to think that everybody cares about what the, the world will always uh, be angry if we do the right thing. Uh, but they don't really care. We see that hundreds of thousands of people are killed in Syria. Nobody does anything or, or in anywhere else in the world. Uh, they care only about their interests. And now they don't have any interest in Israel. The Palestinians, they, they don't even, the Arabs, they don't even have the fuel anymore, yeah, oil, because we have enough oil, we have gas. So nobody, the world won't say anything, and we should just do the right thing. The only reason why the world is going against us is because we're thinking that we're doing the wrong thing. And when we're saying that we're doing the wrong thing, why not? Why should the the uh, world think think differently? If we believe that we that the right thing is to have back our uh, sovereignty over all the parts of Israel, and we'll say that this is the right thing, the world will understand. So there might be a few months that uh, people will be angry somewhere. Most of them won't be. But if there will be, after several months, they will forget that and everything will be back, it will be back again in track. All right, thank you. For, uh, Albert, do you want to chime in? Well, uh, in fact, it has to be made clear that one of our problems with the communication with the international community is that we are saying something and doing something else. So we are losing our credibility. As an example, for Jerusalem, we are saying that it's our capital and that we are sovereign there, and in fact we are transmitting our sovereignty to the Waqf, who is uh, an organization which is totally hostile against Israel. So, when you do something and, uh, and you say something else, you are losing your credibility. If, we, um, uh, if we, what we are doing is according to what we are saying, and that will, will be the case with us, uh, the international community will, will fully understand the message and we are not going to lose our credibility any longer. In addition to that, it is a shame to accuse us to make ethnic cleansing and it's absolutely not our program. First of all, it is clear that we are not going to behave toward uh, uh, the Muslims living in Judea and Samaria like uh, the Arab governments behaved towards the Jews. I have to remind here that nearly one million Jews were, in the best case, expelled from their country, losing all their assets and their money, 
and in the worst case, they were they were they were uh, assassinated, they were murdered. In fact, in countries like Syria, Iraq, uh, uh, Yemen, or uh, L L Libya, and many others, uh, these countries succeeded what Hitler did not succeed to do in Germany. They succeeded to make a Judenfrei land, and that's. We are absolutely not going to behave the same way because we have Jewish value, we have respect for the foreigner, and we are going very respectfully to uh, propose three alternatives to the Arabs, or to the Muslims living in Judea and Samaria. They may live voluntarily, only voluntarily, with uh, uh, our uh, economic encouragement, a good chunk of money. They may stay and live with us in total peace, just like the three and a half million. Uh, American citizens living in Puerto Rico and who has not the right, right of vote and everything is quiet there. I have not, not seen any, any uh, church being bombed. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, 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 there, is, there will be a, a third solution is to receive the Israeli citizenship after a long and complicated process as it is the case in every normal country like the States, France or anyone else. So, please never use again this word ethnic cleansing. It's completely opposed to the truth. Right, thank you, Albert. Tova, would you like to yeah. weigh in? Yeah, I'm going to add uh, one thing. Of course, I agree with uh, all what was said. Uh, I speak to a lot of Arabs. Uh, I live in Lod, and um, I think when you, you, you cut their hope, their false hope to have... Um, to have another state, uh, you become uh, they, they 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 become much more sensible, and they want uh, to be under the Israeli government very very much. They know how better we are, and they would love to immigrate. Uh, lots of them want to go out and and get a get a, a, a nice sum of money. And uh, a lot of, child, uh, of, of their children are studying abroad. Um, it's not, as, we say, as I say, um, uh, Albert, uh, I'm sure you know that, that no uh, so-called Palestinian walks uh, around Paris with his uh, olive tree, you know, holding his olive tree. When they immigrate, they want to immigrate, and they go there and they act as uh, they wish. And uh, everything is going to be fine. And one other thing I want to say that legally, legally, when you when 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 you call yourself an occupator, what do you think the, the whole world is going to say about you? The whole the the, the, the legal system of the world uh, wants our decision, and we, while we want, we don't decide about ourselves, they use that as a weapon against us. That's what, hap what is happening for 50 years. So enough is enough. Thank you all. We're, we're almost out of time, <clears throat> and I have to apologize uh, for people that have been sending in questions. We just don't have time. So in the final, final three minutes, I would like to give each of you 60 seconds, literally one minute, to answer this question. As Arya mentioned, the people voting will have six points and you want as many of those points for your uh, election on primary day, September 12th. Final question, um, just, to wrap, just to wrap everything up, why should we vote for you? 60 seconds, Albert, you're first. Well, I think I am absolutely sure that we're going to, uh, to reach the Knesset, and uh, it is very important for me to see that Moshe Feiglin, our leader, will enter the Knesset together with people who have some experience of life, who can uh, share his opinion, who are like him, fully honest, and who can uh, represent the Israeli people with dignity and with efficiency. Uh, so vote for the people who, that you think are, are, does, do correspond to those criteria. Thank you. Matzlachat to you, Albert. Tova Evan Chen, why should we, vo we vote for you? Well, um, uh, my slogan is that I'm, um, I'm good uh, in words, uh, but also in deeds. Uh, I've done a few things during my life uh, for 
the past 30 something years that um, I'm sure I can use them in in the Knesset. Um, I, I, I think I, I have ideas which are not uh, very, very much out of the box. If they don't let me go through the door, I know how to enter through the window and uh, try me. Yashikoch, and finally, Ba'atzlachat Yehutova, Rafael, why vote for you? Okay, so like I said before, Zehut uh, has a special combination of a white wing, what, what we call in Manigut Yehudit, faith-based leadership, and uh, classical liberalism. And I think that I represent this, uh, I myself, I live in the Shomron, uh, for my theological reasons, and uh, uh, I was in Manigut Yudit before Zehut, and I'm a classical liberal since uh, my youth, and I think I represent this uh, uh, combination in my life, in my personal life, and I think that we need something that really fills both sides of this coin that, to be in the Knesset. Thank you. I just want to point out to everybody listening, and also to say this to myself, how beautiful it is, all our candidates, nobody said anything against one another, even though in the end of the day we're, we're running against each other, nobody feels that way. There's a, a sense of unity, a sense of friendship here. We all wish, wish each other well. Nobody in the last hour said no, this guy, that, like we used to watch in the debates in America where they were almost punching each other. So, kola to all of you stressing your points and, 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 and the positive attitude. And I, I wish you great success, all of you, uh, in next, next week's primary. Zeshikov to Aryeh Sonnenberg from uh, Ramat Beit Shemesh and uh, Jeff Cohen from Hillside, New Jersey. And uh, wishing everybody a Laila Tov, and of course, Am Yisrael Chai Bahatzlacha to everyone. Yashukov. Laila Tov, and thank you very Bye. much. Bye, Laila Tov. Thank you. Laila Tov. Good night. Good night.